So, um, the last people are arriving. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, nice to see so many people interested in this topic. Um, yeah, we want to, as I want to tell you something about uh, BND tools and especially out of the perspective of a PDE user. So, uh, first of all, question to the room Who has ever worked with BND or tried BND tools? Raise your hands. Okay, and uh, who is still using it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the, the idea behind this, uh, or I move on first uh, before I come to the, uh, the, the actual thing. So, uh, first about, uh, about me, who am I? Uh, my name is Jürgen Albaut. I am the CEO and founder of Data in Motion or Data in Motion Consulting. Uh, we're, uh, as it is right now, uh, I founded the company in 2010 and we started out uh, with uh, Eclipse RCP uh, stuff, uh, related stuff and uh, quickly came to the point that we needed uh, application servers uh, backing the, the RCP front end and um, we always thought that it would be nice to have a server which also could support the plugins we are writing for our uh, RCPs so we don't have to rewrite our code. And uh, quickly, there, as we quickly reached the point where we stumbled uh, upon uh, Eclipse Gyrex, uh, maybe somebody knows it, uh, where we could use all the stuff we already had and uh, just build our server application around it. And from there, we uh, moved on, as uh, we moved away from the RCP stuff and uh, concentrated mostly on, on server applications. And so we quickly reached the point that we included other libraries, other stuff which is not in this sense Eclipse or Eclipse RCP related. So all the Apache stuff, uh, non-OSGI non stuff, we had to incorporate in our software. And um, so we went through a lot of struggle. You might know like, hey, I need a P2 update site <laughs> to get the stuff in my, my uh, PDE and so on and so forth. And uh, I always uh, looked at BND tools and thought, hey, this, this would be nice to, to use it. <laughs> So, and I will come to this uh, later. So, uh, for us, I'm here for uh, the fifth year, and at the beginning, I was joining, uh, mostly joining the talks uh, from the some some Eclipse projects. And the more I uh, dove into the server world and and looked upon the uh, horizon of Eclipse itself and all the Eclipse projects, um, I went more to the to the OCI uh, related um, tracks because they they cared about the interoperability between all this stuff. So and there had the, this, this had mostly been more interesting topics for us. So last year we decided to become an associated member ourselves uh, to to influence the specs and uh, being part of the process. So uh, this is the thing. So our main topic, the main things we are doing is custom server applications uh, for the users with OSGI training around this topic and uh, a lot of the modeling stuff we are using heavily EMF and on every corner. Uh, but this is a totally different topic. We might talk about it next year. Um, yeah, like I said, BND tools. Uh, what to expect? You can read for yourself. I don't have to tell you this. Um, yeah, what, what is BND tools and uh, why? Uh, why am I, when I? Why am I doing this talk? Like I said, I was using BND for ages, and it, it, I, I really liked it. Uh, it was. Uh, it, it really helped developing uh, plugins, uh, bundles, and so on and so forth. But it had a lot of edges to it. <laughs> so like for example the target definition, the P2 binding. Um, I was quite happy as we started, I could start using Maven Tyco for the build and not have the, the, the old end build anymore underneath it. So who is using Tyco in its project? Nice. <laughs> so uh, you, you exactly know what, what it is. So for, for instance at the beginning uh, I was using Maven Tyco and I let Tyco resolve my dependencies on, on build time which ended up in a completely different product than I had in my, uh, my Eclipse itself. So until I found out, okay, I can give Tyco my, my target definition, uh, which I had uh, laying around anyway. So I, we went through all this process over a couple of years <laughs> and a couple of steps uh, Tyco supported and did not support at uh, certain times. Um, and uh, three years ago, I was joining the uh, uh, Eclipse on, uh, OCI on route tutorial by Peter Greens. And that was the first time I saw BND tools in action. And I have to admit, I was impressed. <laughs> so because it was everything, all the, the problems we usually faced had been solved there. 
So the, the resolving of my, my launch configurations was quite easy. The, if I wanted new, um, new features in it or new bundles, I just could pull them from Maven, I could pull them from P2, I could pull them from the OBR repositories and so on and so forth. If I have something locally, it's also no problem. This is quite, was quite easy and took a lot of the problems away we usually face with PDE. So then I tried after the, uh, the, the root tutorial, I thought, okay, now I want to try it out in my first project. And uh, yeah, then I got stuck <laughs> because I thought, ah, okay, so where is my target definition now? How the hell do I do this? <laughs> so, and uh, actually I started with BND tools, as I started using BND tools heavily six months ago uh, due to the help or the support of the OCI guys, which uh, helped me over, overcome the first uh, initial problems. And uh, yeah, this was the, the intent, uh, the reason why I thought, okay, this is something I, I need to tell other people <laughs> that, that might face the same problems when they start with it. So uh, BND itself, uh, just a brief thing about it. Uh, this is a, um, a, a not citation, a, a quote uh, you can find somewhere on the BND side, which is quite fitting. Um, BND tool, it's, uh, I think it's uh, short for a built and deploy. <laughs> Uh, underneath, it actually um, has two parts to it. The one part is BND itself, which is just uh, tooling underneath without UI, without anything, uh, written and invented by Peter Greens. Um, this is the stuff you might already have used in some Apache Felix Maven plugins for rebundling and stuff. Uh, this is using the, the BND uh, tooling set underneath. And BND Tools itself is the plugin for, for Eclipse. Uh, written by Neil Bartlett, or maintained mainly by Neil Bartlett and a couple of other guys, uh, which, which giving it in a UI as an Eclipse integration. Um, yeah, so to initially set it up, uh, just to, to have it mentioned at one point, so you can download BND tools uh, by, by its own. You can find it in the Eclipse Marketplace as a plug, uh, as a, uh, an additional plugin uh, or additional features. And the first thing you usually have to do, okay, I want to start now with my project. I will show you uh, in a few moments. Um, you have to create your workspace, and uh, this will give you a nice template for your, your general approach. So this template, what you get there, contains a complete setup for a build. And uh, the cool thing is the build works exactly as it works in your IDE. So there is no difference. So and you, you get this for free without writing any code, without writing any POM files or whatever. So in the current version I'm using, it's Gradle. I know uh, the, the guys are hardly working on uh, uh, Maven-based builds, so where BND maintains the POM files for you with the dependencies and all the stuff. Um, I don't care if I use Maven or Gradle, so I just use the McGradle stuff, which comes out of the box with it. So if somebody else has something, uh, wants something different, you can use this. Um, yeah, and uh, it takes care of the target platform. This is called, in this uh, case, the build BND. I will show you uh, in, uh, in a few seconds. And um, yes, so that's the first thing. To the next point, I will come later. I've skipped one part, unfortunately. Give me a second. Uh, very good. Okay, here we are. Um, first of all, uh, what I want to show you, I have one project of ourselves uh, that I have once in the BND version and once in the old style PDE version. Uh, we have migrated it at some certain point, so just to give you a brief overview, this is the PDE version everybody might know. Um, actually, it consists only of two real uh, bundles or plugins to, that really do something. The one is the, the API and the other is the, the components with the actual implementation. In this case, we have a wrapper around uh, Mongo as a, uh, a service that can provide us with Mongo database connections. We can easily configure them. Uh, so this is the basic thing behind it. Um, therefore, we have integration tests in a, another bundle, everything with, with Taiko. Here we have the POM files uh, and all the stuff you might know. Uh, we have our parent for, for Maven in this case as a, um, as a project. The repository itself, which uh, is the, uh, the, the P2 update site, which falls out of it. Um, the feature we have to use, the dependencies feature we have to use, our, the project where the target definition is inside, and some other test stuff, not quite sure what this is um, at the moment. So you might know it have similar setups, so a little bit differently structured, but this is usually the way a, a well-formed uh, or a good, as a uh, yeah, well-formed Taiko project might look like. Um, 
with the slight difference. So now the same project in BND looks like this. So with exactly the same capabilities, exactly the same stuff. And even if I open the, the projects themselves, um, they're much smaller. There's much less uh, overhead in it. Because what BND does, it is it takes care of you for nearly everything. So all the stuff you have to write by hand, manifest and so on and so forth, BND does for you. So that's the, the basic thing. So we have started in BND tools, we have created our workspace. Um, if somebody is trying to do this and you want to check it in, one tip from my side, check out your Git repository first or create your Git repository first and create the BND workspace, which is not the Eclipse workspace in this project, because if you share it later, you will blow up everything. <laughs> so like usually if you share something with, for example, the, uh, the Eclipse uh, share mechanism. So uh, what we end up with usually is we have this CNF file, uh, CNF folder. This is like the local repository it uses. It has the build BND. The build BND is uh, the amount of um, repositories you use for resolving your stuff. Um, I'm not quite sure what the, the actual editor is for. Usually you just write in the source uh, folder here. And um, first of all, if we compare it with the target platform I have here, uh, yeah, we have our different update sites. We have the features. We have to target the features. Or you can write by hand. Uh, if you know the exact name of the plugin, um, you can put the plugin in, in it as well. Um, yeah, but these are our features we have. We use EMF. We use something of, from the platform. And uh, in this case, our Mongo driver. <laughs> so the Mongo driver itself is already uh, OCI capable, but it's a main, repo uh, main repository. And I have no way other than repackaging it and providing it via a P2 update site to really get it in my target platform in the IDE. So that's the thing we have here. On the other hand, uh, in the BND project, um, it defines the local repositories. This is the stuff you, you can put local stuff in it. So it could just copy the jar file there and uh, it, it is available. Um, it already defines some release repository. If I do a release, it will copy it there. From there, you can move it forward when you do it on your build server, for example. I've defined Maven Central um, for Maven depos uh, repositories. Uh, I believe this is auto generated also by BND. And I uh, additionally, uh, we have a utils project and we have our own Nexus where stuff comes from. So, and all this ends up down here in the repositories view. And this, in the end, is your, uh, your target definition, uh, in a sense. It is much more flexible than the usual target definition because it can contain multiple versions and so on. It, as it produces less conflicts in the end than if you have a. Uh, yeah, roughly build target definition where you just threw everything in you like to have. So for example, if you reference the Neon update site and the Mars update site, uh, usually everything clashes at a certain point. <laughs> so here you don't really have the, uh, the, the problem. They offer different kinds of repository. For example, here the P2 repository, which then can use P2 repositories uh, behind it, because our utilities project is still uh, such a legacy one for, uh, from our perspective. Um, yeah, and uh, one warning at this point, never ever when you try to use it and try to do it, never ever get the idea of uh, referencing the whole Eclipse, uh, Mars, Neon, or whatever repository, because what BND does, or what it does have to do, to get uh, the, the content XML from P2 does not provide all the, the information that are ne really necessary. There are some features of OCI it does not support. So they download every jar file <laughs> and look in the jar file to get the capabilities and so on and so forth. So uh, if you start doing this, you can basically close your Eclipse, <laughs> edit the file and or the, the come back two days later or something like this. So never ever do this. Always look for the, the concrete repository where only Jetty or whatever is in it, not all the stuff. Um, yeah. To P2 repositories are completely um, resolved. All the jar files will be in it. If you have something from Maven Central, um, like the stuff we have here, EMF, for example, we get from Maven Central in this case. Um, you could pull either the, from the, the Maven repository search site, you can pull the jar files in it or the links in it. It will download them then automatically. Or you have this central Maven uh, file where you can just put them in and then you know, so, okay, these are the parts of Maven we will use. Because if not, it would have to do the same thing as with the P2 update site, would have to download everything to know all the stuff. Um, so that's 
basically it about the target definition. I think I jumped over something here. Um, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, we talked about all this stuff, uh, most of the stuff. So next of all is usually you maintain in PDE all your dependencies uh, at build time, at runtime, and so on and so forth in the manifest. So directly going there and writing in there, okay, I require bundle whatsoever, or this is my import or export package. Um, in BND, it's a little bit different. Uh, in BND, you have always in a project these bnd.bnd files. <laughs> um, they have a pretty cool, uh, pretty nice editor. It's not full featured. The, the uh, source editor can provide a little bit more functionality if you use this. Um, but what it actually does is here you have the build part and here you pull in your, uh, uh, your development time dependencies. As you can see, for example, it, does re also it automatically generates these OSGI uh, things in it. These are the, all the framework bundles like bundle activator, bundle context, whatever you need from the OSGI namespace. It is not tied to any real implementation. So because at development time, you usually develop against APIs and you don't care about the implementation. So, and this is the, the concept behind this. You, you put it here, then you can use it, and uh, it is then referenced here in these BND build paths, uh, bundle paths. Um, and finally, also the, and the BND file itself is kind of an extension of, um, of the manifest itself. So you can write normal manifest stuff, you know, like bundle name and so on and so forth. Also require bundle, require or export stuff. Uh, you can write in here directly or you can uh, let uh, BND tools let take care of it for you. So this is what it does automatically. Um, the project we see here, for example, has one uh, difference uh, in comparison to the PDE project. In PDE, we have for the API and for the component, two different projects. Um, the BND gives you a nice feature which uh, says, okay, I can divide my, my current code in different bundles, so if I'd like. This is done by these sub-bundles here, or here like the API BND. And here is the point where we declare our exported packages. Here are the automatically calculated imports it wants to use. The, they will land in the manifest in the end. And in generated, you see the two jar files. It generates with every new build. If you press save, here's the jar file, which is exactly the jar file you have after your normal build. So PDE works a little bit different in this case. They assemble all the stuff from the, the bin folders. They don't really have a jar file they use. They, they just compose it virtually and say, okay, my bundle looks like this. Here you have it. <laughs> so here's the class path of your bundle and so on and so forth. Um, BND really uses then an OCI environment and said, okay, install the bundle that is laying here. So this is actually the thing. Um, yeah. Uh, are the parts we have talked about this yeah and the the nice thing is uh, what i said the, the separation between dependencies you have at development time and dependencies you really have at build time um, this is something you really really should care about because my experience was as i was using pde I, I got kind of lazy so i needed for example bundle activator and so on and so forth what have I done to make it easy for me and not always add the export packages and so on? Uh, I just added Org, OSGI, uh, uh, Org Eclipse OSGI as a bundle, so I have ad had everything available. So nice, easy way to do. Problem with this is, if you want to reach a broader audience than only the, the uh, Eclipse Equinox users, which this bundle is from, for example, that somebody else can use it in his project, which is based on Concierge or uh, Felix or something like this, it will never work if this dependency is in it. Even if you, you only want the, the packages of the OSGI namespace, um, but the moment you have this dependency in it, when I want to resolve it in my Felix application, then it says me, this is the only restriction OSGI really have. You can't have two framework bundles running in the same framework. So this is the thing. OS, Eclipse OSGI is a framework bundle. Everybody is out of your, I can't use your project without, re, as without fixing the manifest. Um, yeah, um, this is that. Next thing is, uh, everybody knows launch configurations. So you have your application somewhere uh, uh, laying around in the form of a product or something like this, and then you have your launch configuration. Um, the launch configuration itself 
is not your product definition. So you can start your launch from the product itself, but what it, uh, gets, if you have a feature-based product, for example, if you look in the launch configuration, it's then uh, suddenly plugin-based. <laughs> so, and there's always a slight difference. In BND, um, uses these BND run files, you can uh, position everywhere. Uh, they have also nice, li uh, neatly li neat little templates for it. Uh, I will show you in a few minutes. And uh, you have a very nice way and comfortable way to define your uh, requirements and what you need and uh, the resolver of BND will take care for you of the resolver of the actual uh, bundles you, you have from him. Um, yeah, it's also easy to say, well, I don't want to use Equinox for some reason. If I have an embedded project, I'd like the concierge more because it is smaller, um, which is normally a little bit harder to do in, uh, with a normal launch configuration. In BND, it's, it's, it's already there. <laughs> so wh what it gives you if we try to um, uh, establish a run configuration, here's an example from our demo we had yesterday uh, with the, the whiteboard stuff. This is such a run file. Uh, if I look in the sources, it's, how good, is it readable? Oh, it's a little bit too large here. Um, it looks like this. <laughs> it says, okay, here we have our framework we want to use. In this case, this is Felix. This is auto-generated. It always brings Felix bundles with it. They're laying in this uh, CNF uh, folder around, so you don't need an extra external repository to get it. If you somewhere in your uh, repositories have, for example, an, the, the Equinox uh, bundles, then it will provide you here with the Equinox as well, so you can simply choose what you want to, want to use. Um, you have your requi uh, run requirements. These run requirements can be like this, where it requires actually a bundle by name. This is the OCI identity. Or you can, uh, has ever, ever, anybody of you ever worked with requirements and cap uh, capabilities from OCI? Many of you have, might have seen it uh, also, where you start your uh, application and say, oh, this uh, extender requirement is not available, and you ask yourself, well, which bundle is providing this? <laughs> what the heck? Um, so for example, for instance, what you can do is, you can just write here, okay, I want an HTTP whiteboard, which is clearly defined in the OCI specs, as a requirement, and all necessary bundles will come, uh, come with this requirement. It's like a little bit of a feature definition in such a sense. So this is what it uh, will get you, and uh, when we launch it, um, we will see the following. So in this case, we only have uh, the, the framework and the Gogo -Go shell in it. Um, when I save it, it auto-resolves. Down here, you see the actual bundles he is using. And now here we have our neat little OCI environment run, running with nothing in it except the GoGo -Go bundles. And uh, now comes the, the really co cool part that actually blew my mind as I used it for the first time. Uh, here we have our um, application stuff we used. I just say, okay, these are my, uh, my bundles we have written here. These are the, some REST interfaces and so on and so forth. And I pull even one bundle in here. So it's now down here. And this bundle has an annotation that says, I require the JAX-RS whiteboard on it. So well, it's not an annotation, it's actually written like, wrong bundle. Now we can take this. Written like this, OSGI implementation, filter for this JAX-RS whiteboard name. In this case, we want to take our own provider, which requires the HTTP whiteboard underneath it. So you can write these LDAP filters to require the capabilities. Uh, you can use annotations for this uh, as well, uh, because BND parses the annotations and writes exactly strings like this for you, so you don't really have to write it by hand. In this case, I've done it by hand. Um, and uh, yeah, there you go. In the moment now, I press, for example, resolve by hand. <laughs> it suddenly says, okay, I need to have this running the configuration admin, I need this annotation stuff, I need a jetty, and so on and so forth. Everything which is available in my repositories, he will take into account and calculate my, um, my dependency tree. And the good thing is, every time you calculate it, it looks the same. <laughs> if you don't change anything in your configuration, it's always the same result. And when I now say, okay, I like it, I say finish and save the stuff. Here we have our running environment. You see he's doing something. And suddenly he says, oh, I have done something. 
and here are all my bundles. And if I now modify my bundle, what it actually does is um, it will rebuild, for, for instance, I have the so whatsoever. Um, if I modify my code, I say save, it rebuilds, it generates the new jar file and undeploys and deploys the new jar file in your running system. So you can develop stuff and never ever really have to restart it. Except if you use something which uses extension points, then you might get a problem. <laughs> so this is the reason, if you have the possibility, never ever use extension points. <laughs> they can blow, uh, shoot you in the, in the knee on every corner <laughs> if you want to use it right. And um, yeah, this is what BND provides you with in, in this case. And what it also is, this is actually your, your product definition, because from here you can also say, uh, Okay, I want something executable I want to give to my, my customer. I can say, okay, export the stuff. It usually says executable jar, but you can also say, okay, do it unfolded for me. Then you have a batch and uh, Linux compatible uh, start script for your application. And as you might know it from the normal product build. So it provides you with this as well. And um, the nice thing is all the stuff you can do from the, works, uh, from the, the console as well. So with the Gradle script on it, where have I find it? I can show you, where is it? Let me see, whatever, ECE. Gradle. So what, what it will do, it will show us all the available tasks uh, you can have. So it will show you different, um, oh, luckily I have internet here. Um, here, for, for every of my project in the workspace, uh, this is if you have a more detailed, so you could build every project, part of the project uh, especially, or you could say, okay, I want to have my dependencies built, I want to have only my tests running, I want to have uh, my, well, where is it? There is also somewhere the release, export, yes, I can also say, okay, export the stuff, and then it would do all the steps, it would do the integration tests, it would do the, um, the, the normal tests which are in the bundle, this is, I will come to next, how much time do I actually have? Hmm? Ten minutes, roughly, okay, now I'm good on, on target. Um, so it will do it everything and it, it will do it exactly as in the, the BND tools itself. Uh, so back to my presentation, what's the next part? Yeah, testing, uh, here we are. Um, usually uh, you, have, you can do two kinds of unit tests. One are the, I, I call it old school J unit tests, like you do it in Maven, if you put it in the test bundles, then they will be run, uh, in the, the test folder it will be run. And uh, just simple Java, plain Java tests uh, for your classes. In BND, you have something similar. You have always this test folder that also generates for you. Everything in here will be auto executed on build and just tests your stuff. Um, if you have something more that you say, okay, we want to really have some, some integration tests where I want to look into my system. Is the service there? Is it reacting as I expected when I use it in a real world application? Um, then you have the possibility to create with new. OCI project, uh, you have these neat little templates I was talking about, you always have here. This is something when you simply want to have a servlet, uh, quite a service uh, registered, then it uses the component development. Or uh, if you use API, then uh, we have something with an API and, and an implementation and also the integration test. And the integration test in the end will produce something like this, which is, again, will be a, become a bundle in the end. Um, you have the build BND and here you have the, the run configuration where you can say, okay, these are the, the bundles my, uh, my test has to run with and uh, then it will deploy the test bundle in it, all the, the stuff it needs and you can run it with, I think it will not work at the moment because my MongoDB is not running, but we will see, run as BND JUnit test. So, and here, they are running and working. 
Um, okay, so then these are not the real integration tests, but it, it works like you, you might know it from the uh, normal plugin tests. It's relatively similar. Um, so this is the way to go, or the two ways. And um, yeah, the, the nice thing is uh, something else I've missed. Give me a second. This launch config for the test. Yeah, you've built in uh, mock support with EasyMock. This is also provided. Mokito is also provided uh, in it by default. It will test every application, every um, thing that has a JUnit uh, annotation on it. And uh, you can change the, you can say, okay, I want to test it with, uh, with Equinox, I want to test it with Felix, wh whatever you want, so it works like normal run uh, configuration. Um, yeah, so I have a rough uh, comparison what PDE does, what you have to do in PDE versus what you have to, how the BND way works. So one thing I've talked about, the manifest, um, you have the manifest editor, which is relatively comfortable. A lot of times I've edited stuff myself. Uh, maybe you're doing it uh, in a similar way. BND takes care of this for you. And I have to urge you, never, as a, you should never ever really try to maintain a manifest yourself because you will never be able to put all the stuff in it which is actually required and nice for the whole framework. Because what BND in the end results in if we look at our component, for example, it's not well formatted, but uh, you see all the import packages, you see all the provide capabilities, it has calculated himself. It says, ah, I provide the service, for example, as a capability, um, which capability it requires to do his stuff in a nice uh, OSGI way. All our, uh, the DS annotations you can use in the uh, PDE now as well, so it generates also the, all the component XMLs uh, for you and references it here, and your import packages, private packages, and so on and so forth. And he does it in a way that it interferes with other stuff as less as possible because you have forgotten something or stuff like this. So because you could, in the build part, you could throw in uh, dependencies as much as you like. Here we'll only mention what you are really using and not the stuff which is around. Uh, just because you needed it on development time. Um, yeah, component XMLs, as I said, you can use it uh, in, uh, in PDE right uh, now as well, because the component editor <laughs> sucks, <laughs> simply spoken. Uh, like I said, BND takes care of this for you. Um, build properties uh, pro uh, and so on is also a, a thing of the past, because this is also maintained in the BND file. Um, then product definitions and stuff, these are the, uh, in the run BND in this case, launch configurations, it's the same target definition. So you have, here, here you have a rough comparison. Um, it also will provide when you say release, it will create in this case an OBR uh, for you. And this will be then by default, if you don't configure it differently, for example, be here. Now I have nothing in it, but it has the, the index is like the component, uh, the, the artifacts XML or stuff you might know from P2. This is just the, the OBR way. Um, yeah. And like I said, you have for build time, uh, you can use Maven Tiger. You have to configure it yourself uh, usually. If, uh, BND brings it for you free of charge. <laughs> Um, I've added some do's and don'ts. Uh, if somebody is really trying to use it, I will attach the uh, slides to my um, to my uh, to the uh, on the conference page. So have a look at it. I also have uh, all what I find out. I try to uh, set it our blog. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, this is basically it. So as a conclusion, I would say as I'm using it now for six months, it makes like life really, really easy. So it makes it easy to compose stuff, it makes it easy to get foreign dependencies in it. It helps you uh, building stuff correctly that it does not hurt anybody else if he tries to use it. And um, something else it is doing, it is, this was the, uh, here I'm referring back to the quotation, uh, to the quote from the beginning. It really, really helps you understand the, uh, what, what OSGI, which is underneath in every one of your products, can, re, uh, can give you. So because it makes it easy for you to, to use it. And it also, it's, it's uh, always eat your own dog food. Because all the definitions in the run configuration files, in the build configurations, they are the same language, they are the same uh, way of writing it like you uh, would write it in your code base. I require a service, I require a capability, and so on and so forth. So you, it's easier to understand the stuff 
Because for, for years I was listening to the OSGI guys and heard about requirements and capabilities and I always thought, yeah, it sounds nice, but how the hell can I use it? <laughs> so, and I've never gotten around to it and BND really helped me to, to understand it. So that I have the ability to just pull in my API bundle, for example, and everything else comes with it automatically without having all the required bundle definitions in the manifest and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, BND, uh, PDE itself, so I will not say it's bad. It's, we've used it for years and uh, we have been lucky to use it. Uh, I really loved it. Uh, but BND is the, the, the better and easier way to go. So you can do a setup much faster, for example. Ah, okay. <laughs> so my time is up. Uh, I hope I could give you some uh, insights and in how stuff works. Uh, like I said, you can look at the things. You also can find the demo project I have shown you. Um, Here's all our stuff. Uh, I will put uh, in the reference to our, the demo project you have just seen, uh, where you can look inside it and see, OK, this is how it's done, and so on and so forth. Yeah. For questions, we don't have time, I guess. <laughs> so if somebody has questions, just come to me afterwards. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. <laughs>